Hi everyone. My name is Anthony and I'm the new executive director of the Little Orchestra Society. We would like to thank you for joining us for a lovely discovery guide created by our education manager, Ms. Brittany. And we're going to hear a little bit more from her in just a moment. This discovery guide is designed to expand and extend your concert going experience by engaging your children and family with activities about music, with history about our famous composer, and with resources that show how the music we love connects with stories, our environment, and even our favorite instruments. We know that it has been a long time since we've been able to see each other in the concert hall, and we're very excited to be back not only to see how you've grown, but so that we can remember how wonderful it is to enjoy live music together and with your family. As always, we love hearing from you. If you have any artwork or pictures or an instrument that you'd like to show us, please send us an email at tickets at littleorchestra.org. Also, I'm sure Professor Treblemaker would love to see what you're up to and share some of your work on our social media. In the meantime, we look forward to seeing you in the concert hall very soon, and thank you. Bye-bye. Alan Kay and I play the clarinet with the Little Orchestra Society. The clarinet is a member of the woodwind family along with the flute, oboe, and bassoon. And like the oboe and bassoon, we play the instrument with a reed. There's the reed right there. It's a little piece of wood. It comes from bamboo actually. And the bamboo is dried out and we can form it into an object that looks like this. By itself it doesn't do anything. If I blow on it, you get nothing. Right? Nothing at all. So we have to strap it to the mouthpiece, which is the top piece of the instrument, and tie it on with something called a ligature. That's this metal object right here. Then we can get vibration and the sound of the clarinet. We can go this low. By doing that, I'm covering each hole with my fingers until I reach the bottom. And then the sound has no place to go but out the bell. This is the bell. It looks like a bell, right? You see that swinging. That's the bell. And we can play quite high, too. It's a very different quality of sound. Very piercing up here. Very different quality. Now here's an excerpt from the orchestral repertoire by Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov called Capriccio Espanol which features the clarinet. And like all the instruments in the orchestra, the clarinet can do some unusual sounds too. We have something called a multiphonic, which means we can hear more than one sound at once. For example, or more ugly one, or I can take one of those multiphonics and sing at the same time. See if you can hear my voice inside the sound of the clarinet. So we have these kinds of fun effects on the clarinet as well. And I'll finish with a very famous, iconic solo for clarinet, maybe the most famous solo written for the instrument by George Gershwin. It's called Rhapsody in Blue. <laughs>
you know a little bit about the clarinet, I hope to see you at the concert very soon. Thank you for listening. Welcome musical friends! Thank you for being with us today to learn about our two special composers for this concert, Duke Ellington and George Gershwin. A double whammy, a two for one deal, a two scoops is better than one kind of situation. They are both well known for their mark on the jazz world. Now, I don't play jazz, but I love to listen to it. So today we are going to be learning side by side. And I think that you will discover, like me, that our composers have many things in common. Ellington and Gershwin were born just one year apart. Do you have a guess about which one is older? Hmm. Well, Gershwin was born first, so he is older. Gershwin was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1898 and Ellington was born in Washington, D.C. in 1899. And compared to our other composers, that's not too long ago, just 122 years. Both of our composers had different names when they were born. Duke Ellington was born Edward Kennedy Ellington, and George Gershwin was born Jacob Gershwin. Hmm, I wonder. What was Professor Treblesmaker's name when he was born? <laughs> Both of our composers grew up playing piano. Ellington began when he was seven years old and Gershwin when he was 11 years old. They began performing professionally and wrote their very first songs before they were even 18 years old. Amazing! Both Ellington and Gershwin paid close attention to sounds and images all around them to help inspire new music. What is something that you do during the day that can inspire a song? What sounds do you hear? Ellington moved to New York when he was a young man and began playing in venues all over Harlem. He started out playing with just six other friends to make a band, and it grew over time to be 14 people. Ellington's band was known as the best in the world. Something special that he did was pick his musicians based on their unique sounds. He always worked to highlight the very best of his musician's skills. He was constantly experimenting just like a scientist. And this only made his skills at composing better and better. Gershwin also worked in New York as a young man as something called a song plugger. He would perform a song for customers so that they could hear what it sounded like before they bought the sheet music for it. This was way before you could pull up YouTube or Spotify and just listen to it. Can you imagine? In addition to being a song plugger, Gershwin worked on Broadway as a rehearsal pianist. He would play the music for the actors as they were preparing to sing their parts. During these years, both Ellington and Gershwin's jobs allowed them to work on their skills as pianists, composers, and arrangers. Now, say that word with me. Arranger. Arranger. An arranger is when someone takes a piece of music and changes it up to fit a new situation. Let's listen to two different recordings of Duke Ellington's Take the A-Train. Oh, it sounds a little different. 
Did you spot all the differences? They could do things like use different instruments or change how fast or slow it sounds. Gershwin worked alongside his brother Ira for many years. George would write the music and Ira would write the lyrics or words to go along with it just like this one. I love it. Gershwin is known for composing for Broadway musical theater, orchestra, and piano. He is famous for blending jazz music with popular music and lived his life out in Hollywood, composing music for the movies. Ellington led an orchestra nonstop for 50 years, writing songs, suites, which is a group of short pieces that are great to dance along to, music for the movies, ballet, theater, and sacred music. He made music the way he wanted to with no set rules or formulas. He lived the rest of his life in the Bronx and was remembered saying, music is how I live, why I live, and how I will be remembered. How beautiful. Both of our composers are remembered by how they continue to experiment to make new blends of sounds, always pushing their skills as composers. I had so much fun learning about Duke Ellington and George Gershwin with you today. Keep watching and together we will find instruments around our homes to make music together. Welcome back for our activity. One of the most important parts of jazz is improvisation. Have you heard that word before? Have you ever had to play an improv game in school where you act out something silly on the spot? A cat chasing a mouse? A giraffe flying a spaceship? Have you ever had to improvise making something when you don't have what you need? Like a mud pie when you don't quite have all the ingredients for a real pie? Or pots and pans for when you don't have any drums. Improvising in music is when a person playing an instrument or singing makes up the music on the spot. They play what comes to their mind at that very moment. Anything can happen. How fun does that sound? Today, we are going to improvise our very own solos using instruments you can find around your home. Let's improvise and find an object around your house. <laughs> yes, Professor Travelmaker, great idea. That makes a sound. These are just some examples that I came up with. Let's hear what they sound like. I have this one, a strainer and a spoon, and I thought I could scrape this one. <laughs> I like how that one sounded. Two spoons that I can hit. And then I put cereal, some Cheerios, into a jar for me to shake. And then also if I shake it towards the lid, it makes a different sound. So I have two sounds with this one. I have another object that I can hit. I have a spatula, a Hufflepuff spatula from Harry Potter that I could hit on top. Or I could use the wood side and hit on the side and it makes a different pitch. I like that one, that one's great. And then I have a Tupperware that it kind of acts like a drum that I can hit with just my hand. Has a really cool hollow sound. And lastly, I have my cat Duncan's cat toy. So this one's cool because it has like a crinkly sound and a bell. So I thought I could play it two ways. Or I could crinkle it. <laughs> I like that one, that one's funny. Hmm, which one am I gonna choose? You know, I kind of like the scrape sound. So I think I'm gonna use that one. Yeah, that one's it. So how about you pause the video and go find an instrument around your house. Try scraping it, tapping it, or shaking it and see what you like and then come back.
Did you pick out your instrument? Great. Today we're going to improvise over Duke Ellington's C Jam Blues. But before we get started, let's take a quick listen and just feel the beat in our bodies. One, How about we start with snapping? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you don't know how to snap, don't worry. It took me a really long time to learn how to snap. You could just clap. Here we go. Another cool thing you could do is make the sound, uh, the hi hat sound with your mouth, like this. All right, I think we can feel the beat in our bodies now. So we're going to start with just one note to create our own solo over the music. But if we just have one note, then we have to focus a lot on our rhythm. And don't worry, there are no wrong ideas. We are just going to be creative and most importantly, have fun. Hmm. Well, I'm glad you asked, Professor Treblemaker. Rhythm is the sequence or patterns of sounds and silences. First, watch me and I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to improvise for my very first time just for you. Let's see what happens. it's your turn. So I'm going to start the music over and I'm just going to sit back and listen. Good luck. Remember, have fun and that there's no wrong answers or ideas. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Two, one, two, two three, four. Yeah, you're doing it. jazz, there are two soloists having a conversation back and forth with each other. It's just like having a conversation with your friend. I could say with my instrument, do you like pizza? And you could respond with something like, yes, I do pepperoni, please. So how about I play first and then you respond back to me. You can play the same rhythm as me or something completely different. Watch for me to point to you when it's your turn. Here we go. One, two, oh, one, one two, two, three, four. Your turn. Your turn. Your turn. We just had a conversation together through music. I'm so proud of you. So I think Professor Treblemaker would love to hear what it sounds like with you improvising. Could you record yourself and send us a video? I will include Duke Ellington C Jam Blues below this video in case you want to go back and improvise all day long. You could even try to do the activity with a different instrument. Thank you so much for improvising with me, being creative and spontaneous, and most importantly, having fun. I can't wait to see you next time. Hi everyone. Welcome back to Reading Time with Jordan. Today we're gonna to be reading Play This Book by Jessica Young and Daniel Wiseman. 
There's a lot of really fun instruments that we're going to be making sounds for in this book. As I'm reading along, feel free to pause the video and try and make your own sounds of what you think the instruments might sound like. Here we go. Welcome to the show. We're going to have a show today. These instruments can't wait to play. To start our show, we need a band. Maybe you can lend a hand. What sort of instruments do you see here? Any that you play or that you know someone who plays? I see a guitar, drums, piano, maracas, all types of instruments. You can rock on the guitar. Try it out. You'll be a star. Give a strum with your thumb. Strum, strum, strum. Make the drum go rat-a-tat. You can pat it just like that. Drum a beat, then repeat. Rat-a-tat, rat-a-tat. Piano keys lie in a row. Some play high and some play low. Tap these keys, will you please? Tink, tink, tink. Tonk, tonk, tonk. Hey, this band is sounding sweet. Feel the music in your feet. Count to four, then play some more. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here's some rhythm on a stick. Maracas rattle. Chick, chick, chick. Chick, chick, chick. You can make them shake, shake, shake them. Chick, chick, chick. Chick, chick, chick. Ooh, we're changing the orientation of the book. A saxophone goes doobie doo. I can do it. You can too. Blow that thing and make it swing. Doobie 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 doo. The slide trombone is loud and long. Hold it high and play it strong. Slide the slide on the side. Bwah, bwah, bwah. Blah, blah. When the cymbals clash, they go crash. Close the book and make them smash. One, two, three. Play with me. Crash, crash, crash. Yeah. Now, you've practiced how to play. You can play this book your way. Play along. We'll make a song. Strum rat attaching ching chick 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 dooby dooby blah blah crash 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 What a show Bravo bravo you played this book just like a pro stand up now and take a bow Clap Clap! Yay! Clap, 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 clap! Look at how happy everyone is playing their instruments. The end. Thank you so much for sticking around for reading time again. I hope you enjoyed the book, and I hope that later on you can practice some instrument sounds of your own, too, and find a new favorite instrument. Until next time, bye!